Hello everybody, glad you could make it. My name is Kaylee Ellen and welcome to this week's video. This week's video might be a little bit shorter than usual. Now we're either going to have a laugh about that when we look at the duration of this video and what it ended up being, or we're going to do nothing because it ended up being exactly how I said. Basically, I don't have a lot of time today. Everything has gone wrong in the past couple of weeks. Everything's just all over the place. A lot is going on. Things have got stupidly hectic. I'm talking like 2020 levels of hectic here. So today I'm going to be doing a few propagations and answering your questions as usual. But this week I've kept it just to the three main updates that you guys asked me for. The main reasons for this is one, these are your burning questions. And two, they allow me to do this in a little bit Bit less time. What I will do though is a report probably even next week, the week after next week, going into a little bit more detail about different things, maybe more quick fire questions, stuff like that. So I have here some wonderful snipping tools with some alcohol and I'm basically just going to depot some of these. I might not even depot them, you know, I might just cut them at the base. I'm just going to cut them and talk to you basically. So in this video today, we have three updates for you. One is the horse situation. Two is the house situation. And three is the sort of not great seller situation, should we say. I don't know what you even call that. I think we'll start with the horse, shall we? Before we start with that, very quickly, I'll show you what I've got. I have this plant here that I'm just going to flash very quickly because it's actually in next week's haul. So by the time you see this in next week's haul, I will have already chopped this up as we're going to do it today. So this is actually Monstera Leschleriana Variegata. I might have got it wrong in the haul. I might have said it was Laniolata. If I have, it's not it's Leschleriana because this here is Laniolata. I have both plants. That's why I've got confused. So I have two pots of these to go through and take little propagations of. I have this big boy. And I thought, you know what? Since it's grown a bit since I hauled it, as you can probably see, let's just have a go at this. This is the Epipremnum um, Full Mint. That's what he looks like there. So I'm just going to do all three, really. So as you can probably tell, it's a short video. I might not be doing as much planty stuff. I might just be talking, but that's how it is. If we get through that, I don't know what I can propagate because I have a lot of stuff. It's not, it's not easy to just start pulling stuff out. Do I have any more of that? I'll pull this one as well, actually, just for a little bit of extra lanolata. I've got a bit of it, as you can probably see. I propagated this ages ago, and it's it's good to go again, actually. So we're doing pretty well. We'll probably start with this guy, because he's the biggest. Let's leave him here, and we'll get started. I'm going to have a quick drink, and I will tell you about the horse. Um, spoiler alert, there's not a huge update, which I know is very frustrating. But please understand, if you think it's frustrating for you, imagine how I feel. Imagine how I feel. Two minutes. I shouldn't be having it, but I really love apple juice right now. Mm. It's just my thing. It's just my thing. Do I need all that sugar? No, not at all. Am I having it? Yeah. Right, the horse situation. So if you have no idea what I'm talking about and you're new on my channel, I bought a horse. I'm, don't worry, I'm not going into all of it. I bought a horse last November, so nearly a year ago. Yay, guys, we've nearly owned this horse a year now. Well, technically I bought the horse in October, actually, so we really are nearly into it. I bought a horse. He turned out to be not a very nice horse. I bought a horse for a novice super safe, gentle, whatever. Turns out it's anything, but I've been in litigation with the seller of said horse for best part of a year now. I think we started in December, so we've been going on our way to a year. I'm sure it will go way over a year. Basically, I'm trying to send the horse back and she's saying, no, there's nothing wrong with him. And if there is, you've done it. So that's fun. We left it in a place where I think... We'd sent a letter to them saying, by the way, you missold this horse because it is a, you said it was a show jumping horse. However, he can't jump. We have records, BSJ records showing that in, I think, 14 shows, the pony was eliminated in eight out of 14 shows. He jumped two double clears in those 14 shows. So not so great, literally not so great. Not a show jumper. We put this to them in a letter and they kind of ignored us. Basically, any any sort of thing that we said to them, they just didn't address and they gave their response had nothing to do with what we'd said, which you're not supposed to be able to do, apparently. I'll get into that anyway, but that was the thing. They, they ignored what we said and then they proceeded to ask for my chats with my horse friend and chats with me and Ben. So... I'm going to redact a lot of what I'm saying to you because we are starting to get quite serious now and we are starting to probably loom near a you know, booking court. So I'm going to maybe not completely indulge you, but I'll tell you what I can. The last place we got to, let's just get a bit of alcohol in there. The last place we got to was 
they were asking us for chats, right? The chats between me and Ben and me and my horse friend. So this would just be chats round about the time that my horse friend was going to try the horse, because she did, by the way. She rode him out in the field, blah, 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 blah. Don't worry, I won't be going over it. And chats between me and Ben about the horse. I, I don't know why they'd want that. I suspect they wanted to catch us out. But my solicitor initially wasn't going to send those but she changed her mind because we think that if we send them, because guess what? There isn't anything in them because I don't know what else to say other than I've done nothing wrong. I'm totally in the right. Um, we're going to send those because I think she thinks that it might just help. It might, if, if we send them and there's nothing in them, they might give up and be like, right, okay, we're not going to get very far in court. It must have taken me, oh my God, guys, it was, it was literally misery inducing, right? And I had to do this twice as well. My solicitor basically said to me, get all these chats from, you know, before you bought the horse. So whenever the horse was first mentioned up until the point where you said to the seller, take him back or else kind of thing, maybe two, three months worth, something like that. And it must have taken me about six hours to go through these WhatsApp messages just between me and my horse friend and only keeping the bits that are about the horse, obviously, because if it's about something else, you can just remove it. That's client privilege. You're allowed to do that. So just to get, just to get guys, the bits on the horse must have taken about six hours. And that is not an exaggeration. I repeat, it is not an exaggeration. It took forever, forever and a day. So I did that. And I think actually Ben helped me out with mine and Ben's chat because it, this one was taking so long. Me and Ben had spoken less about the horse. I'd spoken more about um, the horse to my friend. So literally six hours later, and I'm just practically depressed at this point. But do you know why? Because I had to relive literally all of it, all of it, all of the shit that I went through when I was trying to bond with the horse despite all the problems the points where I was scared to get on because I thought, uh, you know, I'm going to come off. I'm going to, something bad's going to happen. All of that. I had to go back through all of that. And you know what? It sucked. It sucked so bad. And I didn't think it was going to suck that much. So that was genuinely very depressing because it put me back in the situation that I was in. Honestly, coming up this time last year. So that's not very nice because it just feels like I've come, you know, back around in a big circle. But anyway, I did that. Then did the chats between me and Ben. And the chats between me and Ben were like quite short, all in all, when you just kept the, the horse stuff in. And chats between me and my horse friend were really, really long. So my solicitor then looked at that and it took her a while to get through it because there was months worth. She's not long got through it. I think I got a call around about a week ago now just saying, right, I've looked through it. Um, we will send those. We will draft a response. I'm going to, you know, do almost like not a covering letter, but just like our explanation and our position on the content of those messages. And I'm then going to draft something that basically says, yo, by the way, you can't not address the shit that we said to you. So when we said all that stuff about, hey, by the way, you missold this horse because you said it was a show jumping machine and he can't jump proven, then you, you need to address that. You need to address that. I don't know why that is. I'm guessing it just looks really bad on them in court if they don't. Um, they probably just seem to be very evasive and just not willing to do everything. Because normally, at least in the, the UK sort of justice system, by the time you get to court, you kind of have to prove that you've been really reasonable. You have to prove that you've done everything you could and you, you know, you've gone the extra mile. Otherwise, you're probably going to get not looked on very well to start. You're not going to be on a good footing to start. So that's part of the reason why we're also sending these chats. Because although they're not really to do with anything, if we don't send them, it's probably going to hold up more. These guys are going to take more time digging their heels in and everything else. If we send them, they're going to be forced to then announce their position, which is probably still going to be that they're going to fight us. I'm not expecting anything else. Do not get me wrong, guys. <laughs> I am not expecting these people to turn around and go, yep, well, we're fucked. Because of course they won't. They will find a way to, uh, I'm going to cut this lower down, then I'm going to cut it again. They will find a way to, you know, argue it back. But essentially, anyway, that's what's happened. Those messages have been, well, they haven't been sent off yet. My solicitor, as of right now, is drafting the response that should be viewable for me by the end of this week so I can approve it to send off. But the response basically will be, look, here's the chats. By the way, you need to address this. You can't not. And we'll see where that goes, guys. This has been taking a long time, and believe me, I'm not, I'm not buzzing about it. There's, there's nothing I can do. This is just... This is just the way the cookie crumbles, I guess. It's, it's very frustrating and it's, 
it's depleting my cash real quick. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I'm not having the best time at all, but it is what it is. It has to occur. I'm not backing down. I suspect what's going to happen is we will just get a borderline a fuck you back from the seller again. Hopefully, hopefully she will not be dumb enough to not explain her situation, not address our uh, claims, our, what do you call it, like our side of things. Hopefully they're not going to do that. They've done that every time. They've just ignored it. But now that we're sending the chats, I'm guessing this is where my solicitor is coming from. They can't really not, they can't do that anymore. They can't go, yeah, well, we're not doing anything till you do this or whatever, whatever. So that's what's going to happen. They also were quite annoyed that we had sent them things like the livery owner's witness statement, stuff like that. They seemed quite annoyed by that. I don't know why. Are you annoyed that someone's actually witnessed how terrible this horse is? I gotta know. I don't understand why that's annoying. What did you expect? What do you expect? You know we're telling the truth. You really think no one was going to back me up? I don't know. But anyway, they were really annoyed about that. So my sister is also going to basically say, yo, we have every right to put that in there because it's our legal position and we want you to see all the facts. Basically, they might view it as us intimidating them, but it, it's not. It's just saying, look, we have witnesses that can attest to the condition of this horse on its arrival and since. And my witness is a professional. So anything about being novice or anything, it doesn't, it, it doesn't matter. And that probably is what irritates them because they're going to have to question him and not me. Do you know what I mean? So that's kind of the situation, guys. I'm very sorry. It's not a, it's not a super amazing update. <laughs> and trust me, if it's frustrating for you, literally, it's frustrating for me as well. So I can't give you too much more than that. I know a lot of people watch my videos just for this update, by the way. I found out recently that quite a few people that I didn't expect to be watching my videos watch it for these updates on the horse. But it's not as juicy as what I'd want to give you. Not that my legal troubles are juicy, but for the purposes of this video, I guess they can be, right? Because if you don't laugh, you'll cry. So that's the situation we're in anyway. By the way, I think I'm going to leave this how it is. I've left like one little offshoot on it. I don't really want to depot it. I think I'm just going to leave it because I think it might be... It's just going to start off better. These, I'm not going to pop them on camera, by the way. I'm going to do them off camera because I might have to do them when I come back today. I've got to nip out, but... That's kind of what we've got going on. It is literally, guys, straightforward, node to node, cutting them, propagating them, doing all of the things. They are Monstera. I am not worried. This one's a bit shit, but it was either that or leave it on. So I've chose to cut it. I think the variegation is going to spread very well because, to be honest, all of these are quite good. They're all very samey, but they're all very good. So I'm happy with those. I'm going to put these in a separate pile so I don't get them confused. Not that I really could. They're very different from the others. But we're going to put them there. Can you see them? No. I'll put them... I'll put them here, shall we? Can you see them there? Sort of. Sort of. So yeah, guys, there has not been a new letter since you last heard about it if you've been following this every time. You're not out of, uh, out of date on anything. There'll be a letter going hopefully by the end of this week or the beginning of next week. I suspect they will say in the letter, yo, you have two weeks to get back to us. So you will, of course, hear things hopefully a lot quicker. Because honestly, every letter I've had, I've had to prepare some big piece of evidence or something like that. And it's, I've had to like collate something, go through something. This should be the last of it now. So I'm hoping that the letters from now are just a lot more quick. Like my solicitor doesn't have to prepare loads of stuff. It's just formulating the response kind of thing. So I'm hoping now the updates get quicker. I'm hoping, to be quite honest, that they will either settle in this letter, which they won't, or we can just book a court date because from my point of view, the more letters I send, the more this is draining my funds. Um, money is tight anyway. Obviously, I've got the house coming, which is our next topic. But yeah, I, I wish I had more to give you. I don't. It's very frustrating, but it is what it is. Um, but we're still in the running. We're still in the game. My solicitor, I asked her a couple of questions, actually. One was, and this might be me being a bit novice or a bit just not understanding, but I was wondering if when we sent the show jumping the BSJ records over, I hadn't seen them all. They did send them all, but I hadn't seen them all anyway. I just knew of the, the situation where they had the pony, how bad he was. And I said to her, look, if there's some records previous, like a year, two years previous, where the pony's jumping brilliantly and he is doing all those things, will that go against us? And I'm basically repeating this to you in case you have that question. She basically said no, because with every new owner, it's kind of a different horse in a sense. So in terms of its performance like that, it's they can't 
go back and go, well, the owner before this did this look and it, it was great. They can't do that in court. The judge isn't going to be interested in that, which is good because that means we have them by the bollocks. Because if the judge does not agree in court that this person is a trader, if they're a private seller, which if you didn't know, if they agree that they're a trader, our job is a lot easier. I have more rights. If they don't and the judge goes, you know, screw you, they're a private seller. I'm not, I'm not biting that. We can literally turn around and go, okay, well, there's proof of missed sale because this person wrote in this advert, jumping machine, does this, that, and the other. He has BSJ records from when they were riding this pony to show that he was eliminated all of the time. He can't, he can't do the things he said. They can't, they knowingly missold. Not only are they missold, but it's not like they didn't know about it. Do you see what I'm saying? They can't write on that advert. This pony is a show jumping machine. When they went to those shows, they paid the fee, they ran the course, and it didn't go down well. They can't even pretend it's accidental. So I will have them for a deliberate miss sale. And I'm hoping, by the way, that my solicitor is going to put that in the letter because I think that's what they need to hear at this point because I don't see how me speaking to my horse friend about any of this is going to help them. Basically, if you're wondering why they want that, they want those messages because they want to say that my friend was an agent in the sale. So basically that would mean that because my horse friend was acting as, say, almost like a scout finding the horse, for example, they were acting on my behalf. Therefore, if the horse is not right, it would be my horse friend's fault because they were acting as agent. And if I was going to sue someone, I'd be suing her. That is why they want those messages. They will probably find something to, you know, something that they think they can use in that respect. But my solicitor basically tells me, no, you can quite clearly see this person has no experience as such. They're just your friend. They have a horse background. You've asked them a few questions and that's it. A judge is not going to look at these messages and say, yes, this is clearly your agent. So my solicitor is not worried. So she's seen them and she's going to send them off. But that's basically it, guys. I'll not ramble on about it anymore because hopefully, 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 hopefully in two to three weeks, we will have an update and I will keep updating you. I'll finish on the one last thing about that. Sorry, my watch is going off. Um, it might be that I have to start redacting a little bit of information when it gets to a certain point. I don't assume that the owners even know that I make videos. I don't assume that they know that I'm telling you guys. I'm not doing anything illegal, by the way. Um, I know in America, you kind of can't talk about stuff like this. You can in the UK, there's no litigation, there's no court case happened yet, so I'm actually free to say what I want. I know a few people in America are a bit weird about it. We can do that here, it's fine. Um, but I don't suppose they know I'm doing it, so... Mm, we shall see what happens, guys, but that is my update. So, yes, the horse stuff is draining my funds at a rate of knots. And that is because the house is arriving. So I'm filming this on, can I find out the date on here? Tuesday, the 27th of September. That is preceding the Friday when you are now watching it. It is three in the afternoon, if you must know. And I get the house on Friday. So I may have the house at the second you're watching this video because I know I get it on the afternoon. Basically, the, the transfer of sale has to happen. So my funds have to move from my solicitor's bank or whatever to whoever. You know how it works anyway. Um, so we'll be waiting for that. So at some point in the afternoon, that's going to happen. So right now, right now, as I cut this plant, I might have my house. People ask me how it's going and it's stressful as shit. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Um, I'm trying to decorate a house and buy furniture for it and a house that I've seen and I know the dimensions of, but that's all I know. I don't know what color the walls cast from the light. I don't know what color the floor is going to be when it goes down because I've paid for my floor, but it needs to get installed. So I, I'm trying to match things in my head, but I can't because I need to be in the house. I need to see the floor down and I only have a certain amount of time to do it in. It's all really, really stressful. I'm trying to buy furniture and I tell you what, guys, I tell you what, the stress of buying furniture, especially online and especially when it's wood. And I know a lot of you will feel me on this. If anybody's got any tips, by the way, on how to gauge a color of something online, let me know. But the problem I've been having is I've been trying to buy, say, a coffee table, for example, that's wood. I know I have oak floors. It's a certain tone of oak. Obviously, oak can be a lot of different colors. And online, you get something that you think matches that, but then it turns out it's way off. So 
I've been trying to find, <laughs> this is so stupid, I've been trying to find the thing online that I want and then try to go back over and find people on Instagram that might have like tagged it or whatever else and see it in different lights and whatever else to see if it's the right thing. And it's a nightmare. So if anybody knows a good way of doing that or a good way of mixing wood tones, finding the right wood tone, generally finding good furniture, that would be great. I know that I put something out on Instagram, I think it was yesterday or the day before now, as of recording this anyway. Do you guys know of any furniture places? I've had a look at some of your suggestions. Some of them are quite pricey. Some of them are just maybe not the style I'm looking for. And oh, this is another thing. I don't know what style I'm looking for. I'm just having a, I'm having a stressful time, guys. And it's really bad, you know, because I haven't even got the keys yet. I haven't got the keys yet. And I'm this stressed about it. It's just ridiculous. But <sighs> deep breaths. Hopefully everything will be fine. I say everything will be fine. Honestly, this is kind of the start of it because Christmas run-up's going to be wild. I don't know if you guys know, but YouTube is in Christmas. We tend to earn a bit more money. So the harder you work, the more money you're probably going to earn. So I need to do that because of the financial pickle I'm in with all the solicitor shit and everything else. Because I have two solicitors now. I have one for my horse. I have one for my house. They cost a lot of money. I'm literally up to my ears in it. And I'm trying to do the house up so I can just move in and start just living there, making some content, stuff like that. I don't know when I can make content because I feel like the house is going to be actually quite empty for a long time. I don't know how quickly I can realistically get it to a point where I can film in it because it's going to be really echoey. Um, so we'll see how that goes. I don't have a lot of cash to buy loads of furniture, guys. So it might be empty for a long time. <laughs> so I'm hoping to move in before Christmas, but it, it's not going to have a ton of stuff in it, really, which is fine as long as I can live in it. I don't care. I'll just spend the next year trying to equalize and everything else. Obviously, hopefully the court case goes well, because if I win that, I get quite a reasonable amount of money back from it. And that would set me right on a lot of things, I think. So I'm kind of just hanging on for dear life, really. So thank you very much for putting up with that, by the way. I do appreciate that not everyone wants to hear me talk about money, but newsflash, <laughs> I have a job. I need to do it. I make money just the same way anybody else does. Do you know what I mean? Um, and again, big misconception that I'm somehow a millionaire. Honestly... You know what it is? If I was a millionaire, do you really think I wouldn't just pay someone to do all of this? Why, why would I be, why would I be overrun? Why would I be overrun? Why would I be this miserable? I don't, I don't know. But anyway, so that's the tea with the house. I've been picking out paint colors. I decided to go for Benjamin Moore paint, which is probably not the best idea given my financial situation. But I thought, you know what? I don't want to paint it a paint that I don't like. And then in a year's time, sort of redo it and do it again. So I'm trying to pick paint that I really like. The whole house is probably going to be done kind of off-white um, with some accents of, tiny accents of black here and there, a lot of natural woods. That's kind of a vibe. Don't know what my accent colours are yet. There'll be a bit of grey. There might be a little bit of blue. There might be some taupes, browns, things like that. So I'm quite excited. I'm just very stressed. And I'm very grateful. Don't get me wrong. Please do not get me wrong. I'm so grateful to be in the situation that I am in, for sure. It's just really stressful because I don't know how stressful it's really going to get. I, I assume this is only the start because I don't even have the keys yet, guys. And it's this stressful. Um, my dad's going to help me do pretty much all of it, to be honest. He's going to help me do the floor. I know he's big stressed about that. Big stressed. I'll probably explain why that is when you see the house. Oh, a few people have asked me for a house tour. I think I can do it. I might do you an empty one, but like literally there won't be floor down or anything. It will literally just be, here's the house. But I think I might delay releasing it. So I think I'll take the footage when I go in and I'll do the tour, but I don't know when I'll give you it. I might just wait a little bit and wait till I've got on top of it because I would love to do that video and then get another video of, you know, progression in the like the DIY stuff and whatnot. I might film a little bit of me painting because who hasn't seen enough of me painting? Um, do some time lapse and stuff like that and maybe make some content out of it. If I did do that, it won't be on this channel. I will put it on the other channel. I might give you the empty house tour on this one. And then obviously when, when it's done, you can probably have a tour when the plants are in. But anything in between, I will probably put on my second channel because I need to start running that. I just haven't had a house to run it from. So that'll happen. So I'll probably take some footage, but I can't tell you when you'll see it. So don't worry, I am planning for it. Um, I really want to document the journey of the house because it's an empty shell and I think it's going to be fun. 
because there's a few things I'm doing to it. Not a ton, nothing super insane. But for example, they've put in a kitchen and I'm having to change it. So the kitchen that I've got now that came in the house is getting ripped out. So there's a few things I need to do. Um, so I'm just trying to spend as little money as possible, but I'm trying to just get a really good shell of the house and then slowly work on essentially just decorating it and putting furniture in it. I have the bare minimum of furniture. I have beds. I have a sofa. Uh, is that all I have? Yes. I have beds and a sofa and that is it in the whole house, by the way. Nothing else. Literally nothing else. So it's going to be fun. I can't move in straight away for these reasons. So we will see, I suppose. That's kind of the house update. I don't think there is any other update for you other than I'm a little bit stressed about it. But hopefully it'll even out. Um, the last update I have to give you, let's see how we're doing for time. We're doing good. Yes, we're doing fine. We're doing fine. So the last update I want to give you is on the seller situation. Now, the seller situation, if, was it my last report? It may have been. So essentially, again, you if you want to know all of this, you can watch my last report. I'm sure someone will point you to a timestamp or whatever. But essentially, I purchased a plant or two plants or whatever from a seller overseas and... It was a sizable amount of money, I would say. And they sent the plants. The plants didn't make it through UK customs to me. They kind of bounced back and they had pests on them. They had biological life on them. I'm not actually sure what the pest is, um, but they've gone back. So what happened was, said to the seller, well, you're obviously going to resend them. And the seller said, nope, not at all. I've lost out because when the, uh, the parcel got sent back, it should have gone back to the seller. It didn't. It got lost, which is no one's fault. Don't get me wrong. It's the fault of the seller that there was biological life on the plant. It's nobody's fault it didn't get back. It's the fault of, I think it was DPD at the time that was sending it back. Apple juice break. Basically, they refused to refund us. They refused to send another plant. They were like, no, that's your lot. So basically, I got sick of being treated that way because I do get that occasionally. I thought this was the last straw and I'm kind of sick of people doing that. So I told you guys about it. And in essence, I threatened to reveal who they were to you guys if they didn't fix it. And the reason is because it was a lot of money. And I've said this a million times, so I'm not going to go into it. But the way I operate is if it doesn't get to you, it is our fault. It is our fault. Oh, dad is ringing. Dad, dad, stop it. I'll ring you later. It is our fault. So if their plant doesn't get to me, it is their fault. And I spoke to you guys about this on the last report and you guys agreed with me that it is indeed their fault. They didn't think that was the case, but you guys did. So that's good. So basically I came on the video and I said all these things. I said, look, happy to be flexible with you. Happy to work out an arrangement for repayment or something like that. I'm flexible. I'm not going to demand it all right now or that's it. Like talk to me, stop ignoring me because they were, they were ignoring our messages and stuff. And that was that. And Ben sent the video to the supplier in question. And the supplier in question was all too happy to help, which <laughs> it's great. And I'm, I'm kind of sniggering about it, but really it took that. It took that to help. And I don't like that. I'll tell you why I don't like it. I don't like it because if you sat at home bought from this person and you don't have a channel or you do have a channel and it's not as big or, or whatever else, whatever the situation is, you're not going to get that from him. He only did that. He did that out of essentially fear, which is not, it's, it wasn't what I wanted from the person. I didn't want the person to be frightened or anything like that. I just, I refuse, I just refuse to let bad sellers get away with it anymore. I have to do something, right? So anyway, this seller was all too happy to help. So I reluctantly agreed and I, I didn't want to agree to this, but I did to show good spirit. Basically, the seller initially said that they didn't have any money to ship more plants to us. Now, I'm just going to be honest with you. I don't believe that. Because this person is still trading. I, I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It might be true. It might be true. But I'm going to go on record and say that I don't believe that. It's not important anyway. So, even given that, we agreed to essentially pay for the shipping of these plants when they arrived to us. So the seller would initially front the shipping, which I think was quite a bit of money because quite large plants, like we're talking like this off the floor. Big colic Asia, if you're wondering. We agreed that the seller would pay the money up front to send them. And then when we get them into the country, we will absolutely pay that. And of course, 
that's what was going to happen. So they got sent. I, I think they took a long time to, to come, actually. I think they got sent last week. I'm not entirely sure on the dates. Again, it doesn't really matter. And do you know why it doesn't really matter, guys? Because yesterday, they got turned around again and sent back again because they had pests again. So this is the second time that the seller has sent something and there are still pests on it, which I will reiterate is still not my fault. Is it not? Is it not? We've been through that. Same applies. I must point out, by the way, guys, I know you're thinking, right, yeah, the seller's lost plants, he's lost that and everything else. It's like, yes, I know, but this is just how it works. This is how it works when you buy a product from anywhere. Anywhere in the world you buy a product, it needs to show up. And it is, it's part of a bum deal of being a seller. And God forbid, I've had, I get it all the time. I know how it is. It does suck. I'm not saying it doesn't suck. I'm not saying I don't understand the person. Yes, I do. It is shit. I've had this happen with the most expensive plants, guys. Honestly, I have. No stranger to it. It sucks when it happens. It sucks. But you just have to take it on the chin and roll with it. So this has happened with another supplier. And I think I mentioned this in the last video as well. It's happened with a supplier. Um, and it, it was a whole bunch of shit. It was like $10,000 worth of shit. And it got pulled twice. So a similar situation. And that happened twice as well. So anyway, it's got stopped. We immediately looked for the reason as to why it was turned around. And the reason was it had pests. Now, I must point out to you guys, it's not totally free for a plant to come to us and bounce back. We do actually have to pay the inspection costs. So even for APHA to inspect it and go, this is some bullshit, I'm sending it back. They still charge us for doing that. So we're still paying costs the entire time. So I basically said to Ben, I was like, look, we need to just nip this in the bud. I'm not interested anymore. Let's, for the, for all parties involved, we're obviously not going to try this a third time. I don't want to try it a third time. I'm sure they don't want to try it a third time. Let's call it quits and let's just be refunded and be done. Okay. Now I kind of would have preferred a refund that, sorry, I've got some in my eye guys. I kind of would have, I can't speak. I kind of would have preferred a refund the first time, but I had, I didn't really know what the seller's situation was, so I thought I'll just offer them, you know, I'll let them replace it because nine times out of 10 people want to replace stuff because obviously they've made enough profit on the plant that they can probably afford to send another one, depending on the plant, of course, everyone's different. But I didn't really want a refund, but I, I, I went with what was most reasonable. The seller wanted to send another one, so fine. So we basically messaged yesterday, I think, at some point early on, basically saying, yo, this is the tea. Obviously, it's got pests on. We don't want to do this anymore. Um, I think Ben might have just said, Kaylee, Kaylee wants a refund. Because um, Ben's dealing with this at the minute, by the way. Um, just let's just call it quits because <laughs> we don't need to keep doing this. All right. For whatever reason, your side can't inspect for shit. I'm sorry. Clearly not. And our side won't have any of it. And we keep getting charged every time. So can we just nip this in the bud, refund us, we'll go our separate ways. That's it. No one has to know. They haven't come back yet. Um, I don't want to stand here and say we're being ignored because I have no proof of it. So I'm not officially saying that. I'm saying there is a delay in them getting back and it's a long one. So we will see. But what I will tentatively say, and I'm sorry to do it again, I really am, guys, but still in the same situation. Um, a message to the seller, please just refund me because what I said before still stands. It still stands. You can't not deliver a product and, and keep the money just because you were inconvenienced. It, fuck me. I would love it if it worked that way. Okay. The amount of shit that I would not have to give away would be insane. Do you know what I mean? I've sent a spirit to sign out. It's got lost. I've had to send another one out. It, it, it's got lost. This, this happens, right? It sucks. It happens, but I'm not gonna, I can't legally make my customer just not get the item and pay the money. I can't do that. I literally cannot do that. Even if I wanted to do that, which I don't, I couldn't do that. So it doesn't apply to you either, I'm afraid. So I would like my refund. I'm politely asking for it. Again, I would like to say I'm tolerant. I am, but I, I do want a refund at this point. I don't really want to have another plan sent to me. That I've, I've already kind of compromised on what I wanted there. Now I just want the refund. So if you could please kindly respond to Ben and work that out, either installments or whatever it is. Again, flexible. I'm not going to demand it all up front. We need to see some sort of payment though. Um, otherwise, I will still release your details because 
you are trading, you do have some cash flow. It's not, I'm, I'm not going to be, people tend to do this to me and they like to roll over and play dead and then they pretend that I'm like bullying them or something and they've got nothing and I'm this big angry giant and I'm not going to have it. I'm not going to have it. So really quietly, I'd like to ask for a refund. Um, I'm not saying they're ignoring me. We don't know. So please don't think that. Um, we will see how it goes and I will definitely update you in the next report. I would like to tell you, I'd like to stand here and tell you in the next report that this is sorted. If I do not, I'll be telling you who they are because I'm pretty sure by the time I do the next report, it's going to be at least a week and a bit. So by that point, I should have had a response. If you're going to not speak to me for a week, then I'll know you're ignoring me. But being that it's a day, I can't necessarily say that because people are busy. So that is the tea with that. Um, I don't know if anybody has any thoughts on that. I'm kind of surprised that it came back um, and it was pest ridden again. I, I really thought, you know, if if this guy was so ready to not refund it in the first place, I assumed he was therefore very precious about the plants that he had. And I thought he would triple check and make sure that there was nothing on the plant. This is literally why we have these inspections. But I, I, I dare I say I'm surprised. I'm genuinely surprised it's come through and that's the situation. But just so we're all abundantly clear, the plant has not reached me and I'm able to prove that it has not reached me. Um, so yeah, it's on its way back to the cellar. Hopefully, for what it's worth, hopefully it gets back to the cellar and they don't lose another plant. It could just be that the first one went missing, but this one isn't going to. So I'm all in hope that they get their plant back. But we will see how it goes. I will update you. If the seller wants to wait for their plant back, that is fine. Just know that if it doesn't come back, the situation isn't any different. So do what you want to do, but just all I'm asking is to communicate with us, please. Don't don't make this a thing. I don't want to make this a thing. Um, I'm giving you guys an update because everyone, everyone was asking me about it. The three main questions I got today were literally horse, house, seller. So those are the three questions answered. I realize there has not been much of a plant thing going on. As I say, I've just taken some cuttings. So this is the Laniolata here, the Epipremnum Fulmint here, and the Oleschleriana here. So that is them. They will get potted up. They're all single nodes. There's one maybe with two on. I've just basically taken a little bush cutting from all of these. And that's kind of it for this week's video, guys. Again, thank you very much for being really patient with me. I know I took a bit of a mental health break last week because sometimes you just have to, you know what? And it's even though I felt really at war with myself because I'll be honest with you, I can't really afford the pay cut right now. But even though I felt that way, I thought, you know what? I need to, so sometimes something just has to give. And last week I hit that point. So I'm feeling a bit better, but I'm obviously very stressed because I've basically just took a break and come back to the same mess. Does that make any sense? So obviously a lot of it's the same. But anyway, thank you very much for being really patient with me. Um, I did miss you. It was weird not being on YouTube and not looking at my comments on a Friday. That was very odd. But yes, I'm back all as well. Please be patient with me over the next few weeks. And I guess that's it for this week's video. I will definitely get back to you with more of a detailed report. As I say, this one's a quicker one. I say that it's 42 minutes raw, so it's not that quick, is it? But <laughs> anyway, thank you very much for watching this week's video. Please leave anything you want to say down below. I think I have gnats. I need to do a bug bomb. And if you like this video, please leave a like down below. It really helps. It lets me know I'm making content you enjoy, helps me out on the algorithm, helps me to grow, helps me to keep doing this for you guys. And if you haven't already subscribed, it would be great if you could do so. Thank you very much for watching this video, guys, and I will see you very, very soon. Bye.